doing the money market and then i'll just say money interest rate and exchange rate and then i'm going to add the exchange rate toward the end so let's see <laughs> I mean, we have done the entire money market last year. You remember that we did the money demand, we did the money supply, and then we know all the factors that will shift money demand, or know all the factors that will shift money supply, and so on. So I'm not going to I'm not going to repeat all these things that you already know. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to teach you about what you do not know. But let me start from where you know. We start by drawing the money market diagram. And, and, and now remember when we draw the money market diagram, we have the quantity of money here and then we've got the interest rate now here. So with this interest rate, which is here, what we are saying, we are saying that money demand, remember, it goes down like this. And then in this case, we say money demand. We call it L because it's a real money demand. And then, and then it depends on first on interest rate. And then it also depends on on, 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 on income. Right. So now you understand that. So these are the, the effect two factors that determine money demand. So, and then you will see, like, when you read your textbook, this interest rate, they just write R to show that this is the real interest rate. It's fine. R, I, the interest rate is fine for now at this level. Now, what we are now going to do is we're going to put money supply here, which is there, the real money supply. M, S divided by P. So now, it means your L is MD divided by P, actually. It's real money demand. Now, what is going to happen now is we are saying, because in the, the purpose of the money market is to determine the interest rate. Therefore, the interest rate in this market is I1. So, what is happening now is that we are going to say, but now, what happens when money um, supply increases? And then when money supply increases, we're going to come to the factors now. When money supply increases, this is what we're going to see. Remember, this is your money market diagram, and then this is your equilibrium in the market. So when money supply increases, we see money supply shifting to the right. Now we've got this new money supply here, and then this is the old one here. Old money supply there. So the most important thing is now that the interest rate moved from I1 to I2. So we see the interest rate decreasing in the market. The interest rate will decrease in the market. But the question is, but now what happens when money demand increases? And then we're going to draw it this way. And then we say now money demand is the one that increases. And then this is your real money supply. And then this is your real money demand. And then your money demand now increases. So money demand now increases. It means that this line is going to shift upward like this. Now we see that the interest rate in the domestic market now is increasing from I1 to I2. That is what we are going to be seeing. So this line, remember, is interest rate. This line is what? This what and that is the origin. Now, you understand that the whole purpose of this money market diagram is to determine the, um, what do you call it, the interest rate in the country. Now, what is going to happen now is we want to see now that how can we incorporate the exchange rate here. So, guys, I want you to listen to me very carefully. Remember, what I said to you is that this I here is the return. And it's the return on South African deposit. Because this money market is just a local market. So, it's not the foreign market. So what I'm going to do now is, and, and, and because now what you are looking at here is going to be a little bit awkward, but you just need to listen to me carefully. Because what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to rotate this diagram. And when I rotate it, I'm going to show you how it works. I draw this line, interest rate line here. And then I draw it like this. And now you can see now my interest rate line is here. But I do not call it interest rate. Because remember, I said the interest rate is the return on local deposit. Therefore, I will call it R. So therefore, this R stands for return. And then, now, if this R is already here, which is I, therefore, it means now this side is going to be this M, money, quantity of money, is here. 
Now this is being rotated, and now this was what is your 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 what you call um, origin. Now, if I have to draw money supply, I'm going to draw it here, and it's going to be the real money supply. And then if I'm have to draw money demand, I'm going to draw it here. It's going to be real money demand. And remember, this money demand is I put L. You can just put in bracket R and Y, so that you show that your money demand depends on um, the real interest rates and that. So where these two line intersect, that is where now the equilibrium is determined. Now, guys, you must not be sort of. If you do not understand this, you must just sort of play it backward and then let it go slowly so that you understand. And then what is happening now is that we are saying from this, remember, from this now we can determine the interest rate in the country. It's here. And this is the South African interest rate. Now you see the South African interest rate. So what we are going to do is we are now going to introduce the exchange rate line. You see now this line, this money market now has been rotated 90 degrees. So I'm going to extend this line here. And then now I have the exchange rate line. So now if I took the exchange rate line here, can you see this and relate it to the previous lecture, the first lecture? And then you will see that this in the previous lecture, or rather the first lecture, it was called the foreign exchange market. So now what you are looking at here, you are looking at the